Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another ZBrush tutorial. This time we are going to be building something from scratch and detailing it. If you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis, including Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so much more. So if that's your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. In this video tutorial, we're going to cover how to create a ring in ZBrush and then detail it so that it's got a lot of really nice details. So bring out your creativity, open your software, and let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to create a uh, just like a regular primitive here. If you guys create an object and you want to scale it, there's a little gear that shows up. If you click on that, it's going to give you a couple of other options, and one of them is a ring. So what's cool about this is that if you guys ever wanted to create like half circles and things like that, you guys have a lot of control. ZBrush will give you a lot of control. But I'm trying to make this a little thicker. There it is, maybe a little bit more geometry. And then I'm going to back to draw and then I need a lot of mesh. So you're going to divide a lot. Okay, so right now I'm at 540, which isn't very much. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself another divide, which is 2 point, uh, 2 point million. I'm going to make this a little thicker just to give me a little bit more, more room. Okay. So the big thing about this is that I'm going to be using, it's a mask and I'm going to reduce the focal point. So it's not that strong, but then, but I'm going to draw small. So if you hold down control, you can kind of draw like a design. And I still feel like my brush is too big. So I'm going to get a little smaller and it's up to you how you want to kind of create your design. Let me turn on symmetry by clicking on X. So again, you're going to hold down control. And let's say I want to make a design like this. And you're, I'm holding down control, which is what mask is. And I'm going to try to make some areas thicker and some other areas not so thick. And if you hold down control, Alt, you'll get the negative, bless you, the negative version, right? So for example, if I have control, I can add, but if I'll hold on control and then click on Alt, they'll give me the negative sign, which means I can actually chew it away. So that means I can start kind of give, what I'm trying to go for is a sharper edge. All right, let me just go in here and just kind of add some details. So again, I'm just holding down control to get the paint and you're gonna just, what you're gonna do is probably just draw all the little details. So I can just, um, let me just draw a circle here, circle here, maybe brown this out a little bit more. Anyway, you could spend all like making all the details. Okay, so let's pretend this is great. To make this a little bit sharper, if you hold on control and you click on the mask, you're gonna notice that I can make it fade away, right? But if you hold on control and then alt, and then click on the mask, it will make it sharper. You see how the edge is getting sharper? So what I'm gonna do is reverse the mask by holding down control and then clicking out in space, click. And that's gonna reverse it. So we're going to go down here and we're going to go to deformations. And deformations got a bunch of options, which I think you guys should just explore, but one of them is called inflate. So if I change inflate to, uh, by the way, you can, you can use a little slider and just kind of drag it. It will inflate it and then go to zero. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to go to inflate and just change this. To, whoops. I just, I clicked the slide by accident. So. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to change maybe two. So that's going to increase it a little bit. And then there's something called inflate balloon. If I click on this and maybe change this into one, it'll blow it up into a balloon. Now inflate balloons a little bit more advanced, right? So just keep that, that it takes a lot of CPU energy to kind of get it working. So just, you know, don't be surprised if you have to give it a little bit of extra time. 
And then what I'd like to do is increase my smooth by, not by negative 92, that was not what I wanted. Uh, I can type in maybe two, and that's gonna help smooth the edges. I'm gonna hit um, control click, reverse this, and then I'm gonna smooth the edges as well. So I'm trying to get that smooth edge. Now you can see that it's not doing very much. I'm gonna have to go in and fix it myself, but I think overall that's gonna work. So this is kind of like a free way of getting some nice uh, sculpting already done for you. So again, this is under deformations and then you just play with inflate balloon if you want to. So if I wanted to balloon some more, I can. Again, it takes a little bit of time and you can see that it balloons it forward, which I kind of kind of like. Okay, so after that, what I recommend is that you take a, just a regular standard brush and you can kind of, whoops, it's probably a little too much. I'm gonna decrease my intensity and increase my draw size here and just kind of go in and, and build it up a little bit. So this is gonna help kind of build up the piece to give it a little bit more depth. And it also gives it a little bit of texture. And then you can grab the damn standard and kind of using this, you can kind of go in and now this one is pushing downward, right? And that's not really the effect that we want. We're gonna hold down Alt, or if you want to, it's Z add, and you can just click on this and just kind of get a nice little edge. So kind of keep an eye out because maybe the Z depth is too deep. So I'm gonna reduce my Z depth and then try again. Again, I'm just trying to get a nice little detail so that it kind of rises the, the information. And then over here, I can kind of do this. If you want to, you can do it here too. A little bit around the edges here. If you want, just reverse it so you can poke a hole. And I'm gonna go through and And it really helps if you have a, a brush. And the purpose of this is just to give it a little bit more sharpness. Like you're trying to get that sharpness of that piece. Something like that. Okay. So then what you can do is go back to grab the trim dynamic and again, kind of flatten this out a little bit. So it's really up to you what type of technique you want. If you, you probably want to do is a little spike because yours kind of sticks out. But for this, this example, I can just use a little bit of that to just kind of help flatten it out a little bit. So now I feel like I need more geometry. So wish me luck, divide. Oh, let's see, 3D mesh will subdivide history may be partially modified only while the lowest subdivision level is active. Okay, I don't care. I'll just delete the lower, delete lower. Let me get out of the mask. There it goes. Oof, that was really high. Okay, so now you can go in and again, I'd like to kind of, um, can I get a sharper crevice? So I'm gonna use the damn standard again. And this time under subtract, make this uh, draw size kind of small because that's gonna help kind of create a bigger edge. So this is gonna help with like the detail. So it's gonna look like it's being pushed in. Is this why I use this sometimes? Because I need to rotate. And let me get that little. Okay. So now with this, I can use um, the trim dynamic to kind of just 
kind of help with, whoops, this is a little strong. My intensity here is kind of strong. To go in and just kind of sharpen the edges if you need to, like go around in the corners and just kind of get that, whatever you're trying to achieve. So if you want this to be a little smoother, you can go in and just kind of get that nice little flat detail. Now this is like, I'm getting like really close here, right? If you don't like the looks of this, just kind of smooth this out a little bit. And then go in again, just gonna flatten that out. So you're gonna get that nice edge. Smooth this out. I'm just holding down shift, trying to smooth out some of this really uh, interesting geometry. It's kind of sharp. I'm just pressing down smooth and trying to kind of calm it down a little bit. So I'm just holding down shift and just kind of, kind of, it's going to average things out for me. And then again, you can grab this brush and just kind of go in and just kind of sharpen it up a little bit. So again, it really depends what type of look you're trying to go for. You're trying to go for like something that's a little bit chipped, you know, something that's a little, um, whoa, come on little, come on Z brush. So I think I pushed it in too far, but, or pushed it out too far, but hopefully you get the idea. And then after that, I'd probably would recommend that you, it depends if you want this texture, but what you can do is use the clay buildup and you don't want it to be very strong, right? So the clay buildup will just kind of help kind of give it a little bit of texture. So if you're interested in kind of just giving a little bit of extra detail, you can use the clay buildup. You can also hit negative, which will also kind of scratch it down. So again, this just kind of creates an interesting look. And then you can, if whoops, and then you can um, hold down shift to smooth it if you want to, if you felt that it's a little too strong but this kind of just gives you a little bit more of that textured feeling like somebody's pounding on it to try to get those details. So again, it's really up to you what type of technique you are or what type of look you're going for. Uh, last, last thing you probably wanna do is grab the damn standard again. I know the name's weird. Uh, you can actually increase the intensity for this one. Let me change my focal and make this smaller. And then just kind of draw designs. So for example, if you're interested in just kind of drawing really simple designs on it. I can tell my computer is lagging. It's just like, what are you doing? <laughs> 10 million polygons, are you crazy? And it's up to you how much detail you want, but you know, this will just give you a little bit more like, interesting decorative look. And this is kind of fast, but at least hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can achieve uh, with the technique. And then that would do the whole thing. We <laughs> the great thing is the um uh, the deform deformance like easy sculpting they they provide some really nice offsetting and things like that it has noise if you wanted to add noise to your piece you can this is how you can create kind of like clothes you can create this and then there's other attributes in here that you can create like clothing patterns and things you can see this you can use a little bit for skin so we would use a little bit of noise and then we'd add a bunch of other stuff but we'll, we'll talk about that later 
All right, that is how you can create a ring in ZBrush with lots of details. We covered a lot of tools and hopefully you guys found it helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. Do you guys want to see more of these type of tutorials or do you want to see something else? Let me know. If you feel that you learned a little something in this video, please like and subscribe. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like these videos and you want to see more. It also helps me out. Feel free to share this video with somebody that is just learning how to use ZBrush. Sometimes people don't know how powerful ZBrush is, so it'd be wonderful if you guys could share these videos. And finally, don't forget to take a look at academicphoenixplus.com where you can download free models, free tutorials, free trainings, free ebooks, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I know there's a lot of video tutorials out there. So I really appreciate you taking the time to seeing this. Keep creating and I will see you next time.